What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hood podcast or webcast because I don't know how you're consuming this content. I'm your host as always. My name is Jimmy. And as we start off every show, that's with gratitude. Want to say thank you to everyone who supports anything that we do because, um, you know, everything's growing. All the students at By the Hood University, um, our newest course, Intro to Precious Metals, has been taken off like crazy. So I want to say thank you. Um, I appreciate everyone in the community who supported it. And everybody who started their stacking journey in terms of getting involved in precious metals, I want to say thank you. I got my partner in crime, Corey, with me as always. Corey, what's up, good brother? You know, every day above ground is a good day. No complaints from me. You know, I, you know, I'm in love with life, so that's what I'm doing. Listen, man, I'm excited about this episode, man. We got some legends in the in the building, man. Um, I, I want to say, and I told them, listen, I gave them their flowers before we even came on because I've been following what they've been doing for a long time, man. Because you know we're by the hood, so we talk about you know um investing in our inner cities, but also just building up each other. And th this is what they encompass, right? So our platform is designed to highlight brothers and sisters who are doing amazing work in the community, building businesses, and just doing positive work, right? No, not that I don't enjoy us sharing the ratchet, but we gotta like you know we gotta have some balance, right? So, so with that being said, man, we 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 got we got some powerhouses, man. We got Packy and Sandy of Hood Estates in the building. What's up, y'all? Hey. What up? What up? Hey, what's Yo. up, fam? <laughs> Listen, man, I, I'm I'm so excited to have y'all on, man, because everything that we talk about um, is what you guys are doing. Um, love your platform. Love the way that you. First of all. I love though how tight you two guys are. Like that, I'll start with that because I think that is like um amazing to see. Um, it's inspiring, and um, you know, uh, I just want to first off salute you guys for that, right? You know, black love is everything. Thank you. Thank you. My homie. Black love in the house. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But let's get started with you guys beginning. Um, where where are you from? Like you know, um, where are you guys from? Um, how'd you meet? How that whole thing come about? I'm from Miami, three hundred five, Liberty City, Dade County, in a house. I heard that. <laughs> you got, a, hood, you got a, a recovering hood rat right here. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> nah, I'm going to tell you. So it's funny. We've been knowing each other since I was five years old. Um, yeah. she, she's a few years older than me. Not many, but a few years older than me. And uh, it started with uh, me taking piano lessons as a kid. And it was her best friend's grandfather who was teaching me. And I used to go to play piano. And she, you know, I was five. She had to be what, 10, 11, something like that. And she used to joke at me like, oh, that little kid, he can't play, he can't play, he's horrible. And that was our first time like meet each other because I used to t have piano lessons at her friend's grandfather's house. Uh, fast forward a uh, little bit later, uh, a babysitter that my parents used to drop me off to while they was working was another one of her friend's uh, mother. And so we like, dang, wait a minute. I, I seen you over there, now I'm seeing you over here. And mind you, Seven, eight, we kids, you know what I mean? Right. Seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten. And then a little bit later, come to find out her mother started to go to our church because my, my my grandparents was uh, pastors. They had a church. So she started coming to our church. So we grew up knowing each other all of those years as just friends. And, you know, here we are, the short in the story, 20 something years later of marriage, 24, 20, wow. 24 years later of marriage, you know, That's uh, awesome, man. still here, you know. That's, that, that sounds like that was meant to be. Like, you know, you, you guys kept running into each other. That, that was right. meant to be, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So so tell us a little bit about your story because you guys are involved. I mean, I know primarily you're, you're real estate, but, you know, um, you're big in trucking and, and entrepreneurship. So um, take us back about your journey, right? Because I know that you guys at um, one point, I don't know if you still do, but you own like a, um, a motel or hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we actually sold that, and I, I'll sort of give you the backstory. I'll try to com compress it a little bit. But again, um, just growing up, um, you know, Liberty City, Miami, that's where she was from. I, I didn't live there, but I used to go to school at one of the roughest schools in Miami at the time it was Miami Northwestern and uh, go Bulls. But, um, <laughs> you know, because my grandparents lived there, so I was always there at their house. And again, uh, after meeting her and we ended up getting together, I literally moved in with her at 18, like on my 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. And we, we in, you know, she don't call it the projects, but we already know it's the projects, the you know, Lincoln Field <laughs> projects. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, for 10 years I'm there with her and like, I'm, I'm getting it all. Like, even though I knew, but I'm like getting it firsthand because I'm living here. And all this time we in the music business, I'm in the music business because I love music. So I'm working a regular job, but I was a music producer and you know, for the longest, I kept saying, I want to 
take this, I want to break in the music industry, take this money I make from the music industry and start investing in real estate because I had always heard that, you know, real estate is the way to go. And talking with my dad after years of trying to do that, my dad was like, son, I think you're doing it backwards. You know, you need to get into real estate and take the money from real estate and then you can start your, you know, your music career if that's what you want to do. And so after a while, I took his advice and, you know, we got into real estate and initially we was just flipping properties in, um, in Atlanta. That's where we started okay. off, even though we was in Miami, because I mentor. So I say this before I continue. One of the things that we we often don't do, especially us as people, is we just feel like everything, you know, either a we just supposed to have this free information of everything that's just given to us or, you know, because of the struggle of us as a people that, you know, we supposed to get handed out something. And what I realize is everything that has brought us success, I'll be honest, for us, it's been paid information, paid, paid, paid courses, paid mentorships, you know, paid everything because you're going to pay somehow. Either you pay in mistakes or you pay up front to somebody that can help you avoid making those mistakes. And this is more directly to people who um, this is more directly from our upbringing in the hood. Like we don't we don't look for mentors that that word don't even exist in the hood yeah you don't look for investments that word don't exist in the hood like you know you go to school you hear these things and you know you have the people that come to the school and and talk you know how they do like career day and all that stuff like that but we don't see them no, we see them once a year you know and, and most of those people in career day ain't even investors right they they, don't they, up in they firefighters they exactly. they you know what yeah. I'm saying? yeah not, which ain't nothing wrong but we, no, we never no. was exposed to that right. so so this coming into something you know new so Again, realizing at that time we needed a mentor and we ended up getting a mentor, but he was in Atlanta. And here's another thing what, what I tell people all the time. You got to be willing to go where the value is. Right. Meaning if if we were to say it right now, Atlanta, no, nah, we in Miami, bro. We can't be going to Atlanta. Like, <laughs> but no, the mentor was in, that's where he was, he was in Miami, but he was doing all his real estate in Atlanta. So we were willing to get up and what we did, we went, I mean, some some weeks. We was in, we went back and forth to Atlanta sometimes two or three times a week in a car. Wow. wow. Like no, nah, but you skipped it though and check it. So what he did at first, he made us cold knock. Oh yeah. Because so, he to wanted that, to see yeah. how he wanted to see how dedicated he was. Yep. So he did cold knocking first. Yeah, we used to go around doors, knocking on doors for foreclosed homes. Yep. Man, so that right there was a a, a a scary situation because we had never knocked on nobody's door before. Yeah. You yeah. know, we never knew exactly, but we knew that we had a solution to that problem if they wanted it. Yeah. So, but I that was that, a really I, different transition for us. But he wanted to see how he wanted to see how dedicated we were. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's awesome because, like, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's so many lessons in what you just said, right? You have to be willing to make yourself uncomfortable, right? Oh, yeah. Because if 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 you want it, if you want it bad, you're going to be willing to do that, and and you guys yeah. are willing to do that. What exactly. you say, yeah, Corey? I know crazy too, cause I ain't knocking on no damn doors <laughs> in the hood. Man. Y'all crazy as hell. Hey, that, that's hey not, it was crazy back then. We, we had guns pulled on us and all. Yeah, like man. it was, it was crazy. It's crazy until I came that's... on the scene. So it used to be just two men, right? Yeah. And then it was like, man, we gotta bring a female to soften this thing up. Cause I used to sit in the car yeah. and you know we just get the paperwork and stuff together. But they say, now we gotta take yeah, a we female. Need, we need you to knock on them doors, cause. They more welcoming yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it was and crazy. Once I got on board, it became more easy. It was more accepting. It was either yes or no. But if they was interested, they invited us to the home and more like that. But at first, it was rough. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah. yeah. So how'd you go from like uh, your mentor showing you what he was uh, his his game plan and what he was doing to doing your first deal? What was that like? What was that transition like to like starting to do it for yourself? So part of what he did for us was he actually walked us through our first deal. And we did that first one and he helped us with the second one. And it was like, okay, you know what? I I'll be honest, the first one was so inspiring because we made 20, maybe $25,000 on it. And I never forget, we was just talking to somebody about it the other day. <laughs> we deposited the check in the bank. Yeah. You know, it took them some days to clear it. So we went to go get it and we like, yeah, let's let's get that 25 out cash. <laughs> and the tailor's like, oh, we, we can't give you that. Like, what do you mean you can't give us that? It's our money. It, it says it's, Available, like right. what you mean, sir? You have to order that. What do you mean order? Y'all got a vault right there. What do you? Is the bank? This is the bank. What do you mean? I got to order this? Money order money? What are, you, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Sir, we don't have you. Don't, they took us through this whole thing. We getting all upset, like ah, oh, they trying to keep our money. Yeah. Something like we ain't know no better. Like that, they didn't have that on them like that. So we had to come back, and we came back. We we messed yeah, around. And got, we got 
Give it all to us in 20s Every and 10s. You, you, know? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to no, no. 20s and 10s. Like, so, so they took us in the back room. And she literally just taking the money and she's stacking it everywhere in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had the security guard <laughs> walking out to the car. And believe it or not, we went right back to the hood, yeah, to our man. place, and we just threw it up and tossed it around and played in the bed yeah, with it. And did. just, oh, just man. That's, really like a, crazy. that's like a movie right there. Yeah, oh, it was. Man. It was a movie. That money was home. Yes, yes. We had, never, we had home. never seen any money like that. Like, what? we had never seen yeah. that amount of money, you know. Income tax, you know, you used to getting at the time two, three grand, right. maybe four grand, but yeah. twenty five, and it wasn't even income tax time. Like, like we in training now, so you, I'm still on assistance. I'm still in housing. Yeah, right? yeah. So we still in the hood. Food stamps, we still getting work. it all. You know. You know. <laughs> so we still got like you talk about. I'm getting, I'm getting like four, five hundred dollars in stamps. I'm getting stipends for staying in the hood, and you give me twenty twenty five thousand dollars in cash. You think I'm gonna keep with y'all? No, we gonna bring that yeah, home. We took the whole thing out the bank. I need to see that. We had no money management. We didn't yeah. see that money in our life. Yeah, and we and you know we just start and and I think that believe it or not that was motivation. It was. And it was like wait a minute that what you know again and this is what I tell people all our people especially our people in the hood it's the struggles that we go through. Being in the hood and, and being from the hood is minuscule. It's small compared to what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I know everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. Like, I'm, I'm big on that because it, it is not easy. But I said it before. For those women that are single mothers, that's raising their kids, single dads, you know, people that's trying to survive, those same struggles are entrepreneurship. In yeah. fact, it's, it's easier because... The result is not the same. You're okay. doing you're you're working for survival every day in the hood. Right. This entrepreneurship is not survival. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 business. You so how to pay how to print your own money. Yeah, yeah. You you it's different. it's different. So I think for us, what it was was seeing that money, especially in cash, it was like, wait a minute, we can do this again. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. and that was like that that right there was like motivation. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what, when is Hood Estates Films coming out? Because y'all sitting on a movie right there, man. <laughs> it might be in works. We've been talking to some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got y'all got to get in front of somebody. Because I'm like, yeah, like y'all y'all went from Miami Dade County, y'all was in Atlanta, and y'all came back with a big ass check and threw that shit up in the air, like what? Like, like it was crazy. Yo, that's every hood dream. That's every hood every dream. dream. Yes, man. Yes. We got so, the yeah. all Listen, for it. We got yeah, all. Yeah. Man, listen, I'm I'm good as hell. Yeah, and I, was, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like I was <laughs> like when y'all said that, like I was beaming inside. Like yo, they did it. Like they did it for us. They did it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the, the, the funny thing about that to me is like the fact that you want to take the whole thing out. As soon as it clear, all give me all of it. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> the whole thing. The we ain't trust the bank. The no. whole thing. Remember, like, remember, they had just told us that we couldn't get the money a week before. Like, y'all can't like, oh, no you, more. You, you gotta, you gotta order, it. order it. But, but, nah, let me get my money because I don't want to have no problems with y'all ordering money. What? You know what I mean? Nah, I need all mine now. We didn't have no business That's, understanding when it came to money. Like, yeah. we had no financial. Literacy at all when it yeah. came to that type of stuff. Like we was in the business, but you talk about small numbers. You got a couple yeah. thousand for his tracks and yeah. In the music like that, game, you know, I was making a few thousand here yeah. now, working a job, making a couple thousand dollars a month, maybe. Yeah. And this, so this was again, this was. Nah, not five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm serious, yeah. I need all that out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after your first couple of deals, how long before you were comfortable and you just like went off and you guys were doing your own thing? So I remember. Um, we probably we we had did several deals and it was becoming a point where my job was telling me I couldn't take off no more because I was taking off to go to Atlanta because, you know, I had to leave and be there for a few days. So I'm literally taking off like every week. I'm taking off two or three days, you know, next to my days off. So I'm like off five days. And finally, they was like, listen, because it, it got to a point where I ran out of uh, time. You know, you get right. vacation time yeah. and yeah. sick time. I had depleted all of that. And and I was telling them, oh, I don't, I don't care about the money. No, nah, no. Right. Nah. Just don't pay me. But he has some cool friends. Yeah. Hours, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like, don't pay me. And, and then they finally called me in the office like, listen, we, it's not about not paying you. We, <laughs> we, we paying. Yeah, eat. we need you here because we actually paying overtime for your slots that you, every time you miss. That's some, And all my homeboy, all the people I was working with was like, yeah, bro, keep taking off. Like them overtime hours. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so right. so it came to a point where I had to make a decision, which I took decided to take a leave of absence to try it for a year. 
And that year, man, I'll be honest, man, we, we got up to making 80, maybe a hundred thousand dollars a month flipping properties. That's all we was doing. Flipping, yeah. flipping mm -hmm. properties. Right. And, um, well, I, right after that, actually, I, were you guys mm -hmm. actually buying, were you buying them, um, you know, uh, fixing them up and flipping them or just wholesaling? A little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. We were doing some wholesaling and we would, and we were buying, fixing up, uh, flipping. We were just, but it was, it was everything. And this is through this story. I learned the difference between a real estate investor and a real estate entrepreneur. Right. We were real estate entrepreneurs. We was not real estate investors mm -hmm. because as soon as we stopped flipping and stopped wholesaling, we got broke. The money stopped coming in, <laughs> yeah, and we didn't have nothing else. So uh, we learned that lesson again. Just go back a little bit. A year came, and I had to make a decision whether they was like your leave is up. You can't take any more leave of absence. You either gotta, you know, retire or whatever. So, you know, it was a scary moment. Even though we were making money, it's it's again, it, and this is why I don't knock people. Like all of our lives, all we knew was to work yeah. for your money mm -hmm. as a job. Like so, to say, wait a minute. I'm leaving that security just like I got to leave food stamps. I got to leave government assistance. I got to I got to let that go. Wait, I got to let go Medicaid. I got to let go the what I feel is the stability in my life with this job and stuff. And it was one of the most scariest moments of my life. And you would you would think we were broke, but we wasn't broke. It was just that's all we knew. That's all we knew. So this real estate thing was like a side bonus. So once we once I decided to make the decision to officially leave the job, you know, we went in and we went hard. And like I said, we were just flipping crazy. And uh, fast forward a few years later, because this all started like in 2004, 2005. Fast forward three years later, 2008, the market crashed. Everybody know what happened. And, and a lot of people say, how y'all so knowledgeable about real estate? I say a lot of this is because unlike a lot of people, we went through the mm. broke to a million millionaires in real estate to broke mm -hmm. to back. And we yeah. went through that whole crash. So we're we're products of the crash so i know what it is to go through a real estate down market right so all of our stuff was flips and the market crash and i remember we could not sell any properties nobody could get loans the wholesaling stopped and by now we we the other thing we messed up with we over leveraged we had we had too many loans out there you know we had too many loans out there for real estate and I'll be honest, we were balling living too too much. Yeah, we had 13 loans and too many balling. Yeah, yeah. We had we had we was paying almost twenty some thirty thousand dollars a month in loan payments. Jesus. And then our cost of living was All probably right. like twenty five, thirty thousand. Yeah. I mean, we paying for family members stuff. We paying yeah. for mortgages for family members. We we taking eighty people to Disney World. Three well, was out. Know. was <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we just <laughs> Listen, do you know to come from the you coming from the I know, hood I know. to upscale? Yeah. Like there was you like you you don't know how to experience no downfall. You've been at the down a long all I know how to be down. Bro, we went and brought three or four cars, the, the same car. It's different It's just different colors. <laughs> the <laughs> same car. With, with Phantom Grill. Yeah, yeah. it was grills, <laughs> RAM, or sound system, TV. Who they sound like? Who they Ooh. sound like me? It's yeah, exactly like, like me. Yeah, they sound like you. First Listen, time they, I touched they, money, they said, I went to movie. It's a movie. Crazy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, when you come like, from, yeah. listen, when you like come, you come from the city, like, all right, yeah. So we, we are like, look, me and Corey are both from Philly, right? We all come from the inner city. So, mm -hmm. like, when you come from okay. that, our environments that we come from, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, right? Because, listen, you like, t tomorrow ain't promise. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the mentality at the time until you start yeah. to understand how money actually works. And then when you get that yeah. knowledge, that changes everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's Definitely. why you talk yeah. about the difference between a, a real estate entrepreneur and investor. I like the uh, the way you phrase that um, yeah. because they are they are two different things. They are two way different things. Different, yeah. 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 Way and yeah. I mean, so that's no financial literacy. At yeah. All. Yeah. And, 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 the game. and this is this is super important as well. What I want people to understand is, is that this happens all the time, like especially we go live and people being everybody wants the knowledge on like, how do I I need the steps for trucking? I need the steps for real estate. I need the steps for stocks. I need you no know, first. You need the financial literacy yeah, steps. Yeah. You need the mindset steps mm -hmm. because I have witnessed, including ourselves, that just because you make money doesn't make you wealthy. Mm -hmm. Making money yeah. doesn't make you wealthy. How how much of it can you keep and how much of it can you 
use to make more money. Yes. And that's the, that's the thing we didn't know. So we were good. We we were flipping crazy. Like we knew how to make money, mm -hmm. but how to keep that. yeah, how to keep it like and 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 how to do that. And that's that's what I realized. Like everybody just wants the knowledge on that industry. You know, I want knowledge on how to do that thing and not realizing the foundation knowledge that's needed is how do I how do I you know budget how do I how do I save and invest and, and, and how do I secure myself and you know between over leveraging and living you might say above our means because you know you getting that type of money every month nobody you never thought that it's gonna stop nobody said mm -hmm. nobody ever said money was gonna run out right ever. nobody nobody said oh you know yeah. you know you know there's a time like no market just goes right. like this. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, valleys and, and yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. nobody. So we just, we thinking we made 80 this month. We're going to make 80, 90 next month. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then the, the bad part was, here's, here's another thing. I tell people, what I realize the difference from even our success now and most successful people I know is not that they don't make mistakes, not that they don't make bad investments, not that they don't, you know, oh man, you know, this, this didn't work. The difference is knowing when to pivot, mm -hmm. knowing when to say, you know what, this ish ain't working. Mm -hmm. Like we, it was a Titanic, yeah. and we went yeah. down with the, we went down with the ship. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, we had six figures plus in the bank. Mm -hmm. Like when this all started going down, and instead of us saying, you know what, that's here we go again, not knowing that's our money. Yes. We started taking that money, paying all these, trying to pay all these mortgages back, trying to keep this lifestyle, trying to do this, and that 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 two three hundred thousand dollars went real fast yeah. when you live yeah. in a thirty thousand dollar a month lifestyle. You and, know what I'm saying? The key that you that you, that that we always try to tell people is that the game is start over, get a new business. I see we had six figures in the bank. We could have got loans on that money on a whole new business, but we're yeah. trying to save a business that's sinking. Yeah. See, didn't have the, the, the knowledge on that. And then now, guess what? We just grow new business. And not just one, we could have grown two businesses, but we had all our eggs in one basket because that's all we knew. We were one minded yeah. and we were soaring yeah. in that one minded. But there is a bottom that yep. you can hit. Yep. And it was and hard. Nope. nope. No yeah. passive it's income. Kinda, it's, it's kinda hard not to be one minded when you're making a hundred racks a yeah, month. Like yeah. though, it's kind of yeah. like when you when you first touch money and, and you making a hundred grand a month, it's kinda hard not to Man. be one minded. That's true. It's that's true. Yeah, and we and yeah. we didn't know any better. So you figured you focus in because that's what we're taught. You got this mammoth that's making you this money, mm -hmm. go all in, go hard, go that, right? And but thinking we were real estate investors and we was real estate entrepreneurs. So not having any passive income. And not having multiple streams of income. So when that one thing, when we were not able to flip properties anymore, it it just killed us. And not not pivoting, saying, you know what? Well, take this money because it's like everything. Think about it. One of the one of the worst things of success is success. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy. Ooh. That's right. No, that's the, the part. That's the worst the thing right there. Success is success. Mm -hmm. So it's having this success in this made us feel invincible. Like mm -hmm. oh. I, re I remember telling her, oh that, oh, that was just a bad month. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, re I remember people around the news, like the mark, the real estate market is seeming to crash. Like, you know, if you got loans, I, I was like, nah, we, come on, bro. We, we, we've been doing this. Like, we good. Like, that was a bad month. Oh, you know, that was just a bad quarter. Wait a minute. Like, <laughs> the bank account <laughs> looking weak. You it's know what I mean? Real. It's getting real now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting real. Like, yeah, we, yes. we, 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 it's getting real. And, I'm, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad you're sharing that. I'm glad you guys are sharing that, right? Because one of the things that um, uh, like even students that come through that take some of our courses, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm real heavy on diversification, but also like within this last year, a lot of people are making money in the market and options. And I'm like, listen, you know, mm -hmm. but prepare prepare for the for the court. And they they don't want to hear it. They're like, why are you all doom and gloom? I'm like, because I've been around for a long time. Yeah. So why, why are you up? Why are you up? Prepare for what happens when you know everything shifts. So I, yeah. I'm glad you, that you're sharing that because that's real. Like, you know, um, and you and you learn, you learn through experience. Yeah. Right. But you can shift. You know, it's crazy. Right before this, because we real, we real spiritual. Right before this, God had me read the book of um Joseph. I had already read the book of Job. He had me read the most two devastating, one of the two uh, devastating stories in the Bible about two strong men. And I referenced that to Pocky, and I told him, I said it was crazy when I read the, the story of Joseph. There are times when you up. Yeah, they you can be up 
And it's crazy. A phantom comes. And when a phantom comes, don't mean it necessarily it has to hit you. You just have to store up in your season and make sure your seeds are planted because they still will harvest in the midst of a phantom. Right. And then you got to store mm. up to be ready for the next season. The right. point is that it's not about you plummeting down. It's the fact that you can plummet without feeling that bump. Right. Because you got enough cushion that when you hit that bottom, instead of hitting the cement, you go mm. hit some cotton. Yep. It's a, it, you got to go. Mm. There is the ups and downs of life. That's how I go. That's how yep. you know the good, the taste of the cake, and the ones that just don't taste good. Yep. You got to have a bad taste Ooh. sometimes to understand what's good for you. Yeah. Oh, you out here yeah. preaching now, but oh man, listen. <laughs> um, the one, the one thing I will say is this, right? Like I told you, I told you guys before, man. I'm fans of all your work, right? So, um, I could tell that you've learned from your experience because, um, mm -hmm. I've taken some of your courses, and one of the things that I found interesting, right? So I've been taking your trucking course, um, okay. you know, mm -hmm. looking at that as another investment opportunity, and you talk about it, it which was powerful for me. You know, you go through the whole thing. You talk about, you know, the money it could be made, yada, yada, yada. But then you start talking about how you take that and invest in real estate. You're mm -hmm. talking about taking your money here and then reinvesting there. I said, that's powerful because it goes to show that when you tell me the story, now I see where that comes from. Yes. You learned your lesson. So now, now while you got this running, you're taking that and you're putting it over here. So now it's all mm -hmm. coming together. I see, mm -hmm. you know, where that piece comes from. Yeah. So, yeah. Whole, how, so again, Get back to your story, though. How did you guys end up getting into the motel, the motel business? How did that come about from flipping property and going through that to actually getting in the motel business? So fast forward, we lose it all, right? We lose it all. We end up, you know, being homeless. Like we stayed with family, but, you know, that didn't work out. And, you know, there was nights sleeping in the car. And, you know, eventually, um, you know, we ended up living with what we would consider strangers because we, we met them one week. And about two weeks later, we were living in their den, like all five of us, uh, blow up beds and all, no doors. And I never forget, Sandy used to, I never forget there was nights that she used to say, you know, I'm praying, baby. And I was like, you praying for us a house? She said, no, nah, I'm praying for a door. Cause we, we didn't even have a door. Like it was, we was in the den. Yeah, we was in the den. So every time somebody in the kitchen, you know, they look at us and we, yeah, there's no hey, you know, every time somebody got to wash some is clothes. This is after yeah. you had six figures in your bank account. This is after. Oh that. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This this is this is Ooh. this is from in the hood to millionaire to now sleeping in some people's house and they den and every time you know with nothing like we most of the cars repo we had one car that we were hiding so it wouldn't get repo and believe it or not she still got that car to this day it's in storage at Jacksonville she would not sell that car uh, we slept in that car so I know it's sentimental value but uh, we stand with these people. And again, you know, there's no we don't have a door. It's us and three kids, you know, in the in a in a room, you know, with no door. Like every time somebody uses the laundry, they walk through, you know, they come through the garage to to get to the car. Like so there's no privacy at all. But we were grateful to have somewhere. And I remember her praying again, not even for a house at the time, but she was like, I just want a door. I just, if we can get a door, I, I'm happy with a door. So fast forward. Um, we the people we were staying with their son was working downtown in Miami and he started telling me about these tax deed auctions that used to happen in the courthouse every week. And I, I had heard about them, but I didn't know. So I'm going with him every day downtown um, to learn about tax deeds because he was my ride. Remember, I didn't have a car. The car was hidden. So I would have to go with him to be there at nine. And I wouldn't leave until five. So every day for almost eight or nine months, every day, I'm going through every single file for the auction. I'm going to every auction sitting there. You would think I was going to be bidding on every property, but I'm sitting there. And I'll be honest, at the time, I was like the only black dude there. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of mm -hmm. Orthodox Jews, a lot of you know Cubans in Miami and stuff like that. So, you know, they were buying and I'm seeing cash. I'm seeing these people mm -hmm. paying for these properties. You want, oh, 100,000. They going up there paying with cash. Because remember, with, with, with tax deeds, if you don't know, when you win them, you have 24 hours to pay. There's no, let me get a loan. Like, let me do this. No, it's 5% upfront and 24 hours for the other 95%. So I'm seeing people mm. win 200, $300,000 properties coming up there with five, 10, 20 grand in cash. And, and, you know, so I'm around this, but I don't have any money. So I'm doing this every single day. And fast forward, one day, um, a young lady walks in, a, a Colombian lady walks in to the tax deed office while I'm sitting there doing the research. And she looks over and she's like, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm working on the tax deeds. And she's like, oh, 
we're looking um, to get into tax deeds, me and my, my investment firm, but we don't have any knowledge on it. So I was like, oh, so I started to talk to her and she was like, man, you know this. She was like, listen, come to my office and I want to talk to you about it. Long story short, I end up signing on with them and I was in charge of getting tax deed properties for them. And I ended up buying over, well over a few million dollars of uh, property for them. But the funny thing is I had already bought so many properties and they didn't even know I had never bought a tax deed before them. And they, I remember them <laughs> asking me and I was like, she was like, so how many of these before us? Like, how many of these did you buy? And I was like, well, I've never bought any at all. She's like, what? I was like, yeah. She's like, but you're so knowledgeable. And that's when I realized, don't get me wrong, experience is, 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 is a teacher, but you can get knowledge on something. And, this is, and here we go again, realizing each time that every time that God has chosen to elevate us, it was because we put in the work first to get the knowledge. You know, that was always the first step. Yes. So having that knowledge um, had them bring me on and, you know, start doing this. And they didn't even know that we were homeless at the time uh, until she started to recognize, like, you never go out to lunch with us. You never, you know, because mm -hmm. the money I'm making, I'm literally trying to pay off debt. I'm trying to pay off people we owe. See, no, no money, no money, man. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I didn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm paying off. the. I'm taking the new money. Mind you, I'm already in the hole over here. Like that, that, that's done. It's on my credit. Yeah. Cars repo, but here I am trying to pay off cars that already been repoed and trying to pay everything back and not taking the seed and planting it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm still broke. We, we, we still broke. And you know, one day uh, she asked me about managing an apartment complex that that they had just purchased, and that sort of started us on that road. So now to fast forward because the story the story is really deep, but I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. In buying those properties in the tax deed, I met a lot of investors, a lot of big money investors, like I say, Jewish guys, a lot of a lot of uh, you know spent guys that was spending some big money. So uh, fast forward down the line, um, I'm working with a Jewish firm uh, as the alternative uh, acquisitions guy. Like I come in and I find tax deed properties or properties different places. So here comes this this tax deed in Jacksonville, no, I'm sorry, this auction in Jacksonville, this auction in Jacksonville that were auctioning off a 170 unit hotel, motel mm -hmm. hotel. So I'm like, wait, this is a good opportunity. You know, so I bring it to them and they like, mm, nah, Jacksonville, that's a little bit too far. So mind you, the next day I'm at another investor's house, giving him the information for a tax deed uh, auction that was coming up. And as I'm walking out the door, he says, Hey, is there anything else you got going? Like anything bigger, like some something multiple, multi unit or something like that? I say, you know what? I'm glad you asked. I say, yeah, there's a there's an auction going on in Jacksonville in a, in a month or so, uh, a hotel, 107 units. And he's like, hmm, that's interesting. So he asked me how much you think it's gonna go for. And I said, man, this thing gonna go for well over a million dollars. Like I'm again, I'm thinking Miami prices. I'm like, well over a million dollars. Like there's no way. So he said, well, I'm probably only willing to spend about seven hundred thousand, but Let's let's look into it. Long story short, we end up winning the bid for five hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a hundred seven unit hotel. Wow. So, yeah, it was crazy. Now it needed work, but twenty twenty three out of the one seventy units was actually occupied, being being used rather, not all mm -hmm. occupied. So we still had quite a bit, about one hundred fifty units that we needed to get up and going, but it was still in operation. And one of the things that had happened was for the for the, all this time from. The people that I was doing tax deeds for, property management for, you got to realize we were managing all these properties for all of these people in the hood. We were just the face. So they were buying up all the properties in the hood, but we would go in and manage them. So, mm. you know, and it was cool. They paid us, but it was like, you know what, man, let me do something different because one of our agreements was every time I would help them buy a property, they would give me first right of refusal to manage. So when this hotel came up, he literally said, hey, it's an opportunity, man. You can go up to Jacksonville. You can run that hotel. I'll pay you a good salary. You don't have to worry about nothing. And I was I was this close to saying yes. And I thought about it and me and her talking. And I said, nah, man, we need ownership. Like we, we we just been working, you know, with these people, you know, we doing all the work and there's nothing wrong with that's the that's the way the game go. I ain't complaining. But when are we ever going to own something? You know, so I went back and said, hey. Now, if I'm moving to Jacksonville, my family, I need ownership. And, you know, we went back and forth and, you know, <laughs> he, he lowballed me, you know what I mean? Like super lowballed <laughs> me, like three, five percent. I was like, oh, hell no, nah, man. I did that. 
and we end up agreeing upon 25% ownership, right? But right. what 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 helped was also plus the salary. So we got 25% ownership plus the salary, and this was the this was the big kicker: 100% operating control. So it allowed me now to take my company as the operating company of the motel hotel. So, and, and the story going to show you like how it allowed me to propel ourselves because the income that was coming in from the hotel was coming in under our company name, not the, ah. not the building owner. Right. Gotcha. So yeah. It, it, and, and it's funny how it even happened because at first we wasn't going to do it that way, but because they were so busy doing the Jewish holidays during the time, cause it was September 3rd. It was like right up, mm-hmm. right by Labor Day when we did it. They were so busy and they couldn't talk like, you know, the Orthodox Jews, you know, you can't talk them out a certain time, certain days. They can't be on the phone. So it literally was like, well, listen, I know I was giving you 100 percent operating control. I need to I need to own, like operate this business under my business name because this is the only way I can get stuff done without having to call you all the time. Mm-hmm. So he agreed, which ended up being the best thing, because now this gave me full control over the business that was running the hotel. And not just owning the hotel, and it allowed. How did you me- get that idea? What made what made you come up with that idea, that structure? How did you even like you know? Uh, you, what made you get that idea? So, so I'll be honest. I I, I gotta say it was just godsend because I I didn't know, and I think I think what it was was yeah, it was godsend. I I can't even take credit for that. Like it was just after seeing so many things and happening, and it's like you know what? I think too it was. It's amazing how this is. This is why I tell people. This is why you gotta trust God. Like along your journey, yeah, trust man. God. Even what there's a thing that says, all things work together for you, right? Even even those things that seem bad, yeah, can work out for we you. Because we was frustrated. Because I the, the big thing that did it was I couldn't get a hold. Like I'm trying to get merchants accounts set up. I'm trying to get vendor stuff in, and I can't even talk to this guy. I, have cash to go I ain't have and cash to go back and forth. Mm-hmm. So. It was that struggle, and this is the this is what you have to look at. Always look in the struggle for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So it was in that struggle of doing this. I'm like, man, I I know I got 100% control between me and you, but I need on paper 100% control because this allows me. And it's amazing how God used His inavailability, yeah, <laughs> yeah. to put us in the position. Yeah, man. Everything happened if, for if, a reason. If if if, if we would have got that hotel two months later than when we got it. It wouldn't happen. It was it was right doing. I forgot the holiday, but it was right doing this these Jewish holidays that come back to back, and they couldn't they couldn't do nothing. And I'm gotcha. like, I can't run this business, you know. So it, it was that was just that was that was definitely God, just you, you know. And I yeah, and I, I'm big at problem solving. That's all entrepreneurship. That's why I'm telling people going back for all my people in the hood from the hood. You problem solve every day. You problem yep. solving these issues with your kids, with your man. With somebody else, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With your family. Yeah. Hey, let's be real. With your neighbor. You're straight yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, so they already they already entrepreneurs just don't know it. They, they don't know. They just don't know. I remember that's what I, I remember telling Trapper that I'm like, and he was even Trapper was like, bro, compared to the shit that I went through on the corner and dealing with that, like it's a breeze. At least I ain't gotta worry about getting murked or something like that, you know? So uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, fast forward, we we you know we did that deal, and that gave us that ownership. And again, this was a 107 unit hotel, so we came in, and it allowed me to bring in my whole family. I mean, kids, cousins, you know, friends. Like I'm putting everybody to work. As long as you're willing to work, you got a job here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we started to build that hotel uh, with bootstrap it. Like we didn't get no extra money. Like we took that hotel from 23 units. When we finally sold, it was like at 130, 140. So we put up about 100 units, all with the money coming through the hotel. This investor never, we never got another dime. Like, oh, here's money to the rehab. We did unit by unit, one by one, as money came in. And when I say we hustled that thing, like we, first off, you got to understand, this hotel motel wasn't in a great area, right? So we came mm-hmm. in dealing with drug dealers, plenty of drug users, prostitutes, the whole nine. The, the, the first the first day we came there, the police, we called the police. I mean, the parking lot was like a freaking party. Like everybody yeah, like, what's man. going on? We called the police. The police told us they laughed at us. Yeah, they, they laughed at us. They say, man, you know, y'all think y'all finna clean this hotel up? Yeah, no, y'all, 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 y'all this is how you make money. It's the drug usage that's what makes the money. Like, that what you and I'm like, nah, we can't do this. So we end up the next day, we went to the gun shop. Yeah. 
AR-15s, yep. humps, uh -huh. 940s. Yeah. They started calling us the Miami Mafia. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, all of us would walk around that circle like a wild, wild, wild west. Yeah, you know what I mean? Pump at the front door, so when you walk, you walk in the front desk, right you see that, you see that, you see that gun sitting behind the counter all right there. Unified, all, all us unified. All us unified. Yep. All family. I mean, yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 like, okay, I can't. No. How you come in? Take Netflix the Netflix got cut down. That's fire. Netflix yeah. got to cut y'all a check, man. Y'all, y'all gotta. I'm telling man, y'all gotta. Yo, y'all look at me, man. And, and, and one thing I do want to say, one thing mm -hmm. I, one thing I do want to say, man. I, I know why the universe favors y'all, man, because it, because y'all put good energy out there. The one thing I picked up from this story is, anytime you guys were up, the first thing you did was bring everybody else, right? When you were yeah. up the first time, you start, you know, looking out for family and friends. Yeah. When you got the hotel yes. in I'm position. You brought them, yo. Come on, let come work, right? You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, like, when you put that kind of energy, and, when you put that kind of energy out there, it's gonna come back yeah. to you. Yes, and that's the difference. What I learned from the first time, the first time I was giving handouts right. to family and friends. Yes. The, the second time, oh nah, bro, I, you can come up here and work. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, and then we, and now, believe it or not, those families that came, you know, my cousin owns a construction rehab company. My other cousin owns the property management company. My other, like. These are all people who came up and worked with us to build this hotel. So you know it, but it, in the beginning, it was the wild man. I, I tell you the truth, I, 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 you, one time it was real scary. One time I almost had to shoot somebody, like literally, like mm -hmm. this guy was on meth. Like this, this dude, this white dude was on meth, and he was going crazy. And my cousin and my other uh, guy that I had doing security, you know, was telling him, "Hey, man, you got to calm down." He was banging against the uh, the washing machines and stuff, and he went and attacked them. So I'm running back there. I mean, they going blow for blow, but buddy, he, he taking them he suckers like nothing. cupcakes. Cause he, like, yeah, because he, he on it. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he on it. Old time high. Man, I, I had I, I pulled the gun, I caught I caught it back. I'm like, I'm literally yelling at them move, cause I'm I don't want to shoot one of them. I'm literally yeah. yelling at them move, like I'm about to shoot, buddy. And finally, they get them down, and you know the police came and everything, and it put things in perspective as well yeah. because you know he was like. Yeah, you had right to. Sh you probably had rights to shoot them because you have the right to protect your your people and your property. But you know what you would have had to go through with that. But I'm like, I can't let him kill my cousin. You know, my family. Yeah, yeah. But this dude was on it, but it put things in perspective and it, it actually helped us change how we we move forward in a lot of right. things. You know what I'm saying? Monitoring who we were allowing in, and you know the name had already got around that we was like the Miami Mafia because yeah. we was walking around like everybody had strapped. Yeah, I mean, you you can go right now. <laughs> And look up young reviews and probably still see people like if you, if we have people come out them gun toting thugs from Miami running this hotel. Okay. You know what I mean? But y'all y'all was like, like uh, Joe Clark. Y'all went in there and cleaned that place up though. We, we had to. We had to. We I'm, I'm gonna tell you the, the silver line and be, believe it or not, there's a lot of people who lives was changed oh, um, to this day that still reach out to us like, man, y'all changed my life. Like yeah. the structure y'all brought here and the, and the discipline and the the the, the strictness of because I'm going to be honest, we was even telling them like, look, we can't we can't monitor what you do in your room. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we see if one drug dealer come here, you out. Yeah. So you better walk across mm -hmm. the street, meet them somewhere around the corner. But we we you know, and we come in, if we have to come in your room, we see paraphernalia anywhere. You out, but but the dope boys learn how to respect us yeah, too, cause yeah. it's crazy. They knew they had they they things in our hotel. Yeah. So at the end of the day, they learn how to respect us. Just yeah. don't come on our property. Yeah. And then the crazy part about it, it was a switch up. <laughs> yeah. We had dope boys hiding at our property. Yeah. Like, we yeah. They experience. used to they used to come to our property and like, bro, I'm gonna stay here. We and we like, bro, we know what you're doing. You can't stay here, bro. I promise you, I will not sell to one person on this property. I I go off and sell, but I want to stay here because I know ain't nobody getting through these gates. Y'all yeah. don't play. We had we had. We had more people on staff for security than anything. Yeah. Like that's how yeah. crazy it was. Like we had security 24-7. Yeah. Uh it, it was crazy. It like we gotta do a uh a, a podcast on just the you hotel. Sure like it that whole experience <laughs> was crazy. Listen, man. It was, it was banana. Y'all might not y'all might not need a movie. Y'all need a series, right? Y'all need a whole series, <laughs> a whole Netflix series. Yeah, it, 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 it was it was crazy. Yeah, but but it. the silver lining, like I said, a lot of people. You know, change their lives from that. Even one year, believe it or not, we did Easter there. We did a a, a service, an Easter service yeah, there, okay. and the pastor. Yeah, because yeah. we used to let a pastor come there and do weekly uh services with people. Every you know Saturday. what I mean? Every Saturday, yeah. and like that Easter, like ten or fifteen people got baptized. Got baptized right. Say, you know, got saved. And I was like, hey, you know, that's what's up. And again, to this day, we we were running to people. Sometimes they'd be like, man, y'all changed my life, man. 
you know, just that structure that y'all bought. But, you know, that that was the beginning of us, you know, building God. something. That was God blossoming us. Yeah. Because yeah. he knew our hearts. Just you know every, every situation mm -hmm. we've been in, God has been our heart. I, we have been the best for him in every situation. Yeah. Because it's crazy. Like, every time yeah. something came up, even down to the racism, yeah, our yeah. hotel was 85, 90% for, um, white. white. Yeah. And it's These crazy. white people they that I'm talking about. Yeah. Us. They yeah. protected us anytime something went on. Anytime yeah. they protected us, they became family. They're like, yeah. oh no, we got it. We'll be the white face for you. What you need us to say? Yeah. I like oh, yeah. Boy. yeah, we experienced we experienced all type. Like there was even times people came in there, and I never forget we had one white guy doing security behind the desk because we had the we had the cameras, and he would sit behind the desk and do securities off to the side. And I'm literally standing there, like me and her, like as people come in, welcome them, like you know, welcome to the. It was called a Diamond Inn, by the way. Welcome to the Diamond Inn. You know, how can we help you? And it was like, hey, can I speak with the owner? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. No, 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 I need to speak to the owner. That's not him right there to point to the white guy. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, help him. I'm oh, like, go ahead. Yeah. Help. Like, help him. And, and we experienced that a lot. Like, yeah, every time. we got from police to people, like, people couldn't believe we were owning it. They, you lying this and that. And like, it, 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 it just, it was, we experienced a lot of racism there. But, it was all for a reason. Like yes, I said, that, that really place strong. blossomed everything. And the, the, to take the story into what you were saying with the trucking, what happened was while we're there, we run into plenty of truck drivers yeah. because it's right it's off the highway, so like mm -hmm. a big truck spot, right? So mm -hmm. one guy literally comes and says to me one day, hey man, my truck is broken and I need money to repair it and I don't have it, can I borrow the money? And I was like, no, I don't know you like that. You, you're a guest here, I'm not lending you no money. So he came back another day, and say, you know what? I apologize. I stepped you wrong. You're a businessman. Let me give you a business proposition. He literally shows me how much the truck is worth. And then he tells me what I want to do is I want to sign over the title to you. And then I'm asking you for 10 grand for the truck, but you don't have to give me the 10 grand. You just you just pay the two to three grand to get it fixed. And then the other rest, you can pay me after I make you money. And I'm like, wait, wait, what do you mean? He says, I'm going to sign the title over to you. So that way, if anything happens, you can literally go sell the truck for about 10, 15 grand by itself. You don't gotta do nothing. But it's just to show you how much I trust you and how much I need your help. So I was like, oh, at this point, I'm like, okay. You know, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, he, he signs the title over to me. We record it, boom, it's my truck. I, I pay, he's like, you can pay the mechanic directly. I pay the mechanic, a few weeks later, he does everything, gets the truck on the road and we get the first check. And I was like, it's $2,000. And he's like, yeah, now you owe me a thousand. And I'm gonna say this, it probably sounded like I didn't really know what was going on because I didn't. Right. So I'll say this as well <laughs> as a gym. Sometimes you, you're not going to understand the full thing. You just need to jump in, right? You, you get what you can, but every situation you ain't going to understand fully. You got to trust, trust it. And believe it or not, we run in a hotel. You see what we're dealing with. I ain't have time to deal with that. So I paid the guy. I'm thinking, okay, I didn't learn the game until after I was already in it. After I had did mm -hmm. this, and one day he's like, hey, I need you to take a ride with me so you can see what I'm mm -hmm. doing. I jumped in the truck and rolled yeah. with him to see his route. So I was like, okay. But the money came to me, and he's like, yeah, you know, we agreed to 50-50. So I'm like, I'm going to be honest, there's no real paperwork or nothing at, at the first go round because it, it was just, it was. I was helping him out. We run this hotel, and that first check came. Then the second check came. And I'm like, whoa. And we end up getting a second truck. And now it starts to like, okay, let's some structure get behind this thing because this is passive income. I'm literally making money that that's not requiring my time while I'm running this hotel because this is my main thing right now, you know. And by this time, we had already got like a couple of properties uh, that we had got in the hood we for two grand. Hotel. We had yeah, eventually got another mm -hmm. small motel, a 20 unit. So it was like a lot was going on and this was blossoming right in our face, you know. And we ended up selling him his truck back a year later for the exact amount he sold it to me. But you know, shout out Mr. Fuller. You know, yeah. he, he was our introduction. Um, to you know, had been driving for 20 some years. Yo, that's yeah, dope. black guy, Mr. Fuller. He was one of the, one of the few black guys staying at the hotel. Know, right? <laughs> and you know what's crazy about that is that all stemmed from the hotel too. So the hotel literally mm -hmm. changed everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, so let oh, me yeah. tell you, the hotel, we got the vending machine in the hotel that it eventually turned into a convenience store in the hotel. Mm -hmm. where we First off, you know I was. We seen them people walking across <laughs> to the to the gas station, coming back with chips and and cookies and drinks. Like, oh hell no, nah, we need that money. We need we need that right here. We need that right here. And then the, the gas station was closing down like at two in the morning. Yeah. So we now we need something that's 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 running twenty four seven. Man, we knew we knew the game too, right? So we knew everybody. So everybody like family at the hotel. So I'm like. 
Where are all my wee heads? What y'all monkeys are? <laughs> yeah, we went and got it. Exactly. <laughs> we had them fill out a thing. Tell us exactly what snacks y'all want. That's what we going to put into the, to the thing. Let's go. Let's go. Y'all amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit. Uh, yes, they do. It was crazy. And, and we eventually... We, we we took the vending machines and we because the vending machine was pumping like we're making two thousand dollars a month and we couldn't keep them filled so we decided to convert the lobby into a convenience store where we started doing yeah. you know hot sausage oh, hot dogs pickle eggs oh, you know you know all your stuff from the corner store <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. the corner store you know everything yeah. we were selling everything yeah. you know. hot meals yep stuff yeah we started cooking hot meals out the back selling Chicken wing dinners, burgers, the whole yo, nine. Yo, 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 everything. Running, running, yo, running, 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 running trucks on food, hood of hood of state. State. Yeah. We kept it hood, and 100. We, and we was destined to be hood of state. We was, and, and we didn't even know, we didn't even have hood of states at the time. We was just, you know, but no, coming from really where hood. we came from, we knew we had to hustle. Like, we had to, hustle. We, no, had to we had, and this is why I try to tell people as well, multiple streams of income, right? And we knew how important it was, because remember, we ain't gonna make the same mistakes we did before. We had one stream of income, no passive income. We gonna do something about that. So multiple streams of income, and I tell us this is another gem. As you're looking for multiple streams of income, don't be so quick to look outside of where you already are. You see what I'm saying? Before I, oh, let me go and start, you know. No, I'm right here in the hotel. What can I do here? That's already in what I'm doing that can generate more income. I got a customer base. Yeah. So the vending yeah. machines turned to the convenience store, which turns into a full out kitchen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. All, all right, all right here. Then we start selling cars. Yeah, we, we, we bought cars yeah. from, from the auctions. <laughs> we used to put them in the front of the hotel and we used to sell them to the guests. Hey, I can tell y'all now, we used to sell them to the guests and we used to work out dinner, man. Maybe. We'll talk about it off, off hey. the camera, but yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> listen, man, yo, yeah, listen, y'all y'all are amazing, man. I, lo I love this story. I'm telling you, Netflix cut a check. But listen, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this question. How, uh, what, what, how'd you get the idea to brand yourself as Hood Estates and start to share your story and share your knowledge with others? How'd that come about? All okay. right, so that came from her. So fast forward, we sell a hotel, right? And we knew that we wanted to do something because we had been through that before. So we knew we wanted to do something that um, didn't require our time because we were stuck at this hotel for three years, 24-7. It was like... A non-stop daycare. Man. So we like we 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 made some money on the sale. We made our money on the sale. We had bought some property. We had some investment properties going. So we had some passive income. So the next thing is, what are we going to do for earn income? Mm -hmm. So at the time, it was we want something to be mobile because we want to travel now. At this yeah. point, after being stuck at this Jeez. place for three years, we want to travel. So we decided to start a uh, a marketing agency, a social media marketing agency. Yes. And we didn't have any idea, but again, bought a course. And that course started to give us ideas on things to do. So it's funny. The course says practice these things on your own page. Well, I didn't have a page. She, she had a personal page. And I'm like, nah, we're not doing it on your personal page. But we had this brand name that we had came up with months prior. We had trademarked it month, months prior because at the time we was heavy in buying properties in the hood. And people used to say, mm -hmm. what do y'all do? So we say instead of real estate, we call it hood estates. And that's why the tag, our original tag says war zone profits because I ain't gonna lie, we used to listen to Bigger Pockets and they used to always call the hood war zones and people used to be on there laughing and making jokes about war zones. So our tag that says war zone profits was really saying, well, while y'all laughing at the war zones, we making profit in the war zones. Mm -hmm. that's, and and that's, that's what started it. So we had the name and I was like, well, let's use this name uh, to do the page. Now, I never wanted to be on IG. No. She had always kept saying, you need to be on IG. I'm like, nah, nah, I, I never forget. I went on LeBron James page <laughs> and it was my first time experiencing IG. And when I say it was going in on Buddy, but I was like, okay, that's cool. I see how people get, but then he had put up a picture of his kids and they was going in on his kids. And I was like, babe, nah, I, hell, I'm not getting on Instagram. <laughs> Somebody said something about my kids. Like, nah, I, I, that's not, I ain't for that. So she, you know, she kept, she, and I was like, nah. And it's funny, here's the thing. I'm, I'm what you call a jumper, right? Yes. I'm that person, if I study something too long, if I, if I try to plan it out too much, I start to see how it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I'm a jumper, I'm, I'm that person, listen, I'm just gonna jump. And after she had told me to do it, I just one day, she woke up and I said, it's a hood stage page, I started it. And she was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I just did it last night. Yeah, and she was like, well, I thought you weren't gonna do it all, so I did it. And 
we literally was just there to share our story with people yeah, like hey them on journey. we just we going because at the time we was at properties every day every we, was, day. we were still day. being real estate entrepreneurs as well so we would we would go live on the properties every day and at the mm -hmm. time realizing i had a team but i just we was just there and it started the pages started to blow up like you yeah, know 30 days 30 we days 10, we had ten thousand followers in the first 30 days it was crazy and Jeez. people were asking us for hey you know y'all got a course y'all got a something like, like what what y'all want? What do you mean? Like, yeah, we just, <laughs> we just here. You know what I mean? And the demand, I tell people, I was doing free, bro. I was doing free calls, yeah, free yeah, for free mm -hmm. every wow. day. I would be on the phone, and she was like, "Babe, what are you?" We ain't and, got no light yeah, mode. I'm like, and 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 I and I tell you this. Here's another gem. If you can't do something for free, don't expect to get paid for it, mm. right? I needed mm. to do that for free. It was, it was one. It was practice. It was. But two, it, it allowed me to see what people needed. Mm -hmm. Like, what do people need? What do yeah. people want? You know what I mean? And and trying to help people. And I'll be honest, if if we didn't grow so much, I probably still would do them. Yeah. I do it something. Yeah, lives, it was changing man. lives. And it wasn't just about business. It wasn't business. And the thing is, what people don't understand sometimes is as your following grows, like everything grows. Like, mm -hmm. I can't be in the DMs all day. Like, I have an assistant that answers DMs. Like, email. Like, you can't. So you you can't, like, give everything to everybody as one person. And that's even what started with the trucking. Like we put a, a throwback Thursday post of our truck and the post blew up and people hitting us in the DM like, yo, I want to know about trucking. And I never forget, I was telling people, no, no, we don't teach trucking. Like that's just a throwback Thursday post. Stop asking me about it. Like we real estate. Yeah, yeah. And an, an, another gym, sometimes you asking God to bless you and you want it your way. And God said, I'm trying to bless you my way. Well, you can never you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You would have never yeah, told me we would be more known yeah. for trucking Ever. as hood estates than we are real estate. But <laughs> that's that's crazy. That that's crazy. Listen, I told you, y'all, you guys been putting out content for so long, right? That I, I knew about you guys for a while. Like I've seen you on YouTube, like uh, mm -hmm. literally years ago. Um, right. Because as someone like I, I, you know, our our brand is is by the hood, so we look up like you know. Hood properties, you know, uh, black folks in real estate, all that kind of stuff. And you got, right. you guys got content everywhere. You guys got content everywhere. So you also, <laughs> have been, you guys have become masters of social media, right? And yes. um, you know, and, and I'm a, I'm gonna keep giving you guys plugs because again, I told you I'm huge fans. I also uh purchased your uh you know your marketing course, the celebrity uh yes. course. Yeah, I cop yes. that too. Listen, I, I told you, man, I cop all y'all stuff, man. I, I support y'all because I love what you guys are doing, man. And after That's hearing your enough. story, I, I'm even more inspired because what's inspiring me isn't your success. What inspires me is how every time you guys get success, you reach back. You reach well, back and like, you know, and, and you always bring somebody with you. And to me, that's even more yeah, powerful yeah. because we have certain people that just focus on income, man. right? It's yeah. okay. Real quick, let me say this real quick. A lot of people focus on income, but to me, impact mm -hmm. is more important than income. Okay. And you guys are making an impact. Right. I'm saying you guys That's are making true. an impact, and I, you know, I want to yeah. tell you that while we got you on here, we can say, Core. No, nah, man, I'm just they they did the interview together. That that told me everything I need to know. <laughs> like, that's it. You know what I mean? Like for real, because you know we've interviewed people, and you know that have been successful and been successful, and their partner is successful. Nobody does the interview together. Wow. Wow. Like, not that those people are wrong people or they didn't do it wrong. Right. Y'all just did it right. right. You know what I mean? Like, just because, you know, y'all just did it right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, there's nothing more that I like to see than when two people are really in tune with each other. Like, y'all know each other so well. Y'all oh, in tune yeah. with each other. So, like, this is, this is, for me, this is like the come up. Like, this is the, this is like the, <laughs> It's for real, like I'm, I'm, I'm from, I'm from a place, like, like Jim said, like man, I'm deep from the hood though, like right. I, I'm, I'm, so I'm you know, know. Know. yeah, yeah, like, like everything I do, like, so you, I feel good trauma in everything I do, right? Like, so, like I, you know, I look at the world, everything, every, every time I look at the world, I look at it like an eight year old boy from Philadelphia that mm. grew up on one of the worst drug corners in the country. Mm. You know what I mean? Like so that's so when y'all when y'all y'all share your story, y'all made me proud, man. So you no, know, oh, like man. you said, Thank impact you. impact over impact over in, income. Y'all y'all yeah, making yeah, a real yeah, impact. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And I yeah, and I man. told him before we even got on this platform, before we even did it, I told him straight up. I said, "Listen, you got anything you need to hide?" <laughs> he was like, "No, I say, Nick, I was your boy." 
<laughs> I say, whatever somebody know me, that's what I had to do to hustle. Like, whatever I did, however I did, whatever, whatever, you can't hold it over my head. Like, I ain't saying I don't give a damn God forgave me already. You know what I mean? I ain't never wronged nobody, but I, you know what I mean? I, I did whatever I did to hustle, but I, you can't hold nothing yeah. over my head. Can't nobody yo, yo, it. Yo, from, say you we we from the same place. I don't apologize for nothing. If for I did what? it, it's because I had to do it at the time. Right. It is yeah, what it is. Man. It is. That's my it's past. That's what we had to do. First of all, that's our environment. So you can't tell me I'm supposed to act like this when my people in my environment wouldn't even understood me. Right. So I wouldn't be able to get what I needed to get around people trying to talk like you told me I'm supposed to act. Yeah. So that can't yeah, even man. go to the same place. So you come rock in my hood for a little while and you will see you go change a little bit too. You go say thinner. You gonna be saying what's up, though. You gonna be like, what's up, my nigga? You gonna be like, hey, you gonna be talking about it. Say what it is. Say what it is. That's what's up. No, I'm not getting my hundred. Yeah. But listen, so man. But, but you guys, man. Listen. But that's the thing, though. You, you listen. It's, it's one thing to be hood, but you guys, but you guys have a heart. You always giving. Well, and, yeah, and, yeah. and I think, but I think that's why things come back to you, right? You put that energy yeah. out there; it always comes back to you, right? Yeah. Even, right. I give an example, right? So even though uh, I was talking to a, a DM with a Trapper, right? Because he's supposed mm -hmm. to come on our platform eventually too when he gets some time, right? Mm -hmm. But even the love he shows y'all, like y'all brought him in and like you know helped him out, and you guys have built the relationship together. How'd that come about? Oh, because I, I think. That, that's also inspiring to me because to see people that look like us coming together mm -hmm. in like you know building, I, I think that's just powerful to see. Yeah, yeah how that even come about? So it's funny. Um, again, I, we're very spiritual, you know, and I never forget. He, I was live one day and he said something on one of my lives, and I end up catching his. And you know, like the first time he said something, like something connected, right? And believe it or not, God told me to do something for him, right? And you know, we never say what it is because obviously that's that's us. That but it was, yeah. but I, I remember reaching out to him saying, "Hey, bro," you know. He was like, he was like, "Oh, bro, I follow y'all." Listen, now. I say, "Listen, all that's good, but there's something I need to 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 do for you and to tell you, and it has to be done face to face." And and I remember, you know, he'll tell you the story. It's like at first he was like, "Huh." <laughs> Man, you can't tell me over the phone like nah, I, I need to see you so this several times I'm literally going like hey bro I need to see you because here's the thing when God instructs you to do something literally he didn't know but you holding up my blessing right That's now because yes. I need to be obedient <laughs> right? I, I'm trying to be yes. obedient here so you know yes. you holding me up so at first he was like, man, I ain't never flew out to see no nigga, man. What? Like, I'm, I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just like me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, just, just come out here, man. Just come out here. And it was last year, June, he came out. He finally came out. And that first night with Trapper was life-changing, yeah. even for us. Yeah, but it was more so for him. It was some things that God needed him to release. Yeah. And it was some things that God needed us to plant in him. Mm -hmm. Right? But it, you can't he couldn't be the reason why he had to come to us. Watch this is because what the seed that God wanted us to plant in him couldn't be happen because he was already full. Yeah, so much in, in bad soil from what he Man. was from his past and things he was involved in. Yeah. So he needed to be able to release that. Mm -hmm. See, because once you release that, now you can be filled back up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the only way he would release that would be face to face. Right. right? So. That was that was a, a release that that night. Like it was it was one of the most powerful conversations, mm -hmm. moments that we've had with a person yeah. ever. You know what I mean? Like just to keep it real, all of us in tears type yeah, of thing. Man. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was it was it because at the time, even some people that I was in the house with was telling me, man, you crazy, man. You got this. You know, this dude, he tell you what he did. <laughs> he tell you his record. Like you gonna let him spend the night here with us. Your kids upstairs. And I'm like, listen. I know what God told me to do. Yeah. I got to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Because I could have easily had him go to the hotel, but he wouldn't have opened up. Like, no. see, this we got to be be open. You know what I'm saying? You can't go with your own. I'm going to let this dude stay in this house. You know, I don't know what he do. Who he... Now nah, I had to be be open to, to allow God to lead me because he needed to stay there because that's what opened him up. Like, wait a minute. I don't know y'all. Y'all finna let me stay here with y'all family like this? Yeah. And from that point, it, here we go again. You have to give to receive Amen. what we poured into him in so many ways. And I can't go into all of it, but it it was so amazing that it opened him up yeah, to a point where it was like, hey. That exchange and that 
transformation allowed him to hear clearly from us, which allowed God to talk through us to him. And it changed the trajectory of his life and his business because yeah. now he was an open vessel. He was willing to hear yeah. and do whatever. And now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him game, yeah. but not forcing it upon him. But it's just, I see the results, but you know why I can see the results and I can listen to the game? Because you didn't come in, I came in giving him yeah. and hey, I'm in the position. Remember, I'm in the position. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why am I giving him? Why am I letting him stay here with me? Why am I pouring into him? Why am I doing these things? It was to open up. My, my, my grandfather used to tell me he was a pastor. I used to ask grandpa, why do y'all feed people at the church? Before he was like, well, grandson, I'm gonna tell you something. It's hard for people to hear from God, to hear from you, to, to believe anything you say that they hungry. You gotta feed them first. Yeah, man. You feed them first, and then people oh. will listen to you. Yeah. yeah. Man. Listen, yeah. man, the reason I bring that up is because, like, you know, um, I love to see the relationship that you guys built. Um, and I love to see the way he talks about you guys. Um, mm -hmm. because again, I, one of the things I'm I'm big on is like you know, collaboration over competition, right? So right. Uh, all of, a, a lot of a lot of us sharing information and even the time you've given us today, man, it, it's totally appreciated. But I think it's just very powerful, man. And and, and listen, man. You need you, your next endeavor got to be a church, man, because I'm ready to send a donation right now, man. You're out here <laughs> preaching, man. Like, so, so we need the Hunter Face Church next, man, because, man, <laughs> we've been talking about doing a series I, I, like I'm, that. I'm, you I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I'm inspired right now, man. I'm inspired right man, now. Man, listen. Because, again, when I said the, the energy you give off. Yeah, the energy you guys give off is amazing, man. Because it's all about it's all about giving, man. Thank it's, you. It's all about giving, and like, and like Corey Thank said, with y'all, y'all together, man, it's just very powerful, man. Um, man, so let me ask you guys. This is my, my best friend. I'm the yin is Jane. You know, like what he gonna do without me? I get on his nerves up on a purpose. With a purpose. Yes, yes. <laughs> that comes through, though. That, 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 listen, that comes through. That comes through on social media. It comes through in this talk right here. Like you didn't even gotta say it. I see it. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. So you guys are big into the truck, and you got the trucker now. And like I said, I, I'm taking your course. I got I got multiple hood face courses. I, I I love what you guys are doing. Right? So, <laughs> okay, thank you. You, thank got, you. So you got now you got the courses. You got the truck and all that. What is the future for hood estates? What are some of the things that you're looking to do in the future? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, yeah. listen, you, you got some in the future. I know my future holds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, what, 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 what do you think your future holds? Listen. First of all, let me say this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let me sit, sit up. Because <laughs> I was talking for a minute. Let me say this. I told him already. Our goal is I want to get to the place where we are completely serving because my legacy, my legacy, not my husband, my legacy is to leave so much of God here through me till it can it can't not be said. So I want to get to a point in our lives where we don't we're not no longer looking at financial because money has been chasing us down. Thank you, Jesus, for prosperity. Yeah. And I want to get so to the place where God can use me to give back everything that we have embarked on, everything that's been planted inside of us. I want to be able to give that freely. And I told him, you got four years to because I I'm he made me a promise. I said, I need you retired by 40. He kept his promise. Yeah. He was retired at 38. I was like, okay, I can take that. So now I told him I will be 50 in four years. I need to be at this place in my life where I know my partner is able now to give me the, the um, support I need. So now God can use me to pivot where I need to go. And I need to get to the point where I'm now just pouring into others that I like. This backstory that's, that's going to be happening, that we're going to be talking about when I'm 50, is going to blow people's mind because I need them to understand that we relate, we've been there, we've done that. This is not no story that every, this is not no, that scenario. No, we have lived this life and it, there is nothing new under the sun. So what we're going to do, we're going to constantly tell our story. I told him, you ain't got no shame. I don't have no shame. I want to get in and dirty with people. And I want them to understand that you can make it. You got your mind right. I don't play no, excuse my word. I don't play no shit with you. I don't play ball with you. I stand in the pay with you. I hold you accountable. And we can rock this thing. You can elevate if you believe. And I need you to believe that. And that's my goal until the day I die. Yep. That's that's hard, man. Listen, that's that. Yeah. That right there, what one before I'm not even to cut you off, Packy, but I just want to say that you guys are like proof that when you have a partner on the same page, mm -hmm. that changes everything, right? That changes mm -hmm. everything, man. You know, mm -hmm. everything. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Yeah. yeah uh, what I what I would say is, you know, uh, definitely we're on that. Obviously, there's a purpose, right? Yeah. And 
I, I say this all the time. Nine out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, your purpose is not, has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is to, for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was all created. My purpose is not for me. It's for somebody else. It's like somebody else's purpose is for somebody else. So uh, as we continue to grow in that direction, you know, we, we're always open, like you said, to see what God's going to take us. Mm -hmm. uh, from a business standpoint, uh, obviously, you know, looking to just continue to provide uh, value and knowledge to the people in the yeah. trucking game. We're working on some some upgrades to the course on different ways of doing things, maybe with leasing trucks and stuff like that. But one of the newest things that we have, some people know, a lot of people don't, is truck lending. So we started a truck lending program where we're private investors and some of our, you know, IG family and elite family are also Black private investors. Black people the bank. Yeah, we the bank. So Black basically, the bank, yeah, we, we the bank to, to a lot of people. So we've done about 30 something deals now. Uh, we've done, you know, several ourselves looking at another one. And basically, mm -hmm. just like if you needed to buy your truck, you would come to us as private lenders. You know, we would tell you what the down payment would be, just like a regular bank. Mm -hmm. You put the down payment, we would fund the rest of the deal and your monthly payment would come to us as investors. Yeah. You know, oh, and- awesome. um, Y'all heard that out there? Yes, truly okay. passive. Yeah. Like, you can do that. 100% passive. Like, uh, we've done those and we've done several of them. And I'll be honest, <laughs> It's easy, man. I, I might not buy a truck the other way and do it the other way no more. Like this, this lending thing, is, is a, you know, again, it's not as much, but you figure just to give you an idea of some numbers, uh, one deal we did, we put up 25,000, we get $1,100 a month for 40 something months. Wow. Another one. Yeah. Another one we did, we put up 18,000, we get 850 a month for 40 something months. So you, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's like, we don't, geez. we don't deal with nothing. That's, yeah. You just became the bank. The bank. You just became the bank. The bank. The bank. You can do the same thing with houses. Yeah, you can do the same, same thing with houses. So Turkey. we, this is just it cash flows more because where you put that type, where you put that money and get that type of cash flow is, right. is and not deal with the truck, the driver. Like we related to property, we don't have to deal with tenants or toilets or any of that stuff. So now the only thing I have to do is if you don't pay, just like a bank. I just report because I got a GPS. And in some cases, we if you're listening, we got two of them on there, maybe four. <laughs> you know, we put more than one. So don't try to find one until you go get off. But yeah, you put multiple GPSs on the vehicle. You don't pay. We call the repo company. They pick it up. And then guess what I really learned? See, here we go again. My guy that put me on to this, he had been doing this for years. And guess who was funding all the deals that I'm thinking it was banks? It was the Jewish guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Jewish guys yeah, was man. doing it. And he had been trying to tell me about it for a couple of years. And I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he like, bro, this, this is another mm -hmm. way. So finally, when we did one and I realized, and he was like, this is what happens. If the person doesn't pay, most people are not going to default within the first six months. Like that's super rare. So you mind you, one of the reasons that it works is because we make sure us and other investors that get into our lending program, because I think it's more for the investor than it is the borrower. Just to be honest with you, we, we, we look out for the investor, but um, you figure six months in and we're getting the trucks, making sure that the trucks are around 70% loan to value. So that way it's like a property. We're ahead of the game before the first mm -hmm. payment. If the person don't make the first payment, we just got a truck 30% off. Right. So, yep. cause they don't get the down payment. So you figure six months in, give you that case scenario on that $25,000 loan, six months in, I'm paid back seven grand. I'm only owed about 18 and I have to get the truck back. So all I need to do is make sure everything is good. But I take the truck and I put it because the truck now hasn't decreased that much in value. Because right. remember, I put up twenty five thousand for a truck that's worth thirty five thousand. Right. So six months later, let's say the truck worth let's say it's worth thirty. But now I got a thirty thousand dollar truck and I'm only owed eighteen. So now I can either sell the truck straight up cash and make 10, 12 grand or Flip it again. So now I take the truck, mm. put it back out there, wow. let somebody else come and give a mm. five, seven, ten grand down payment and pay a thousand dollars a month for 42 months on a loan that I'm only have owed 18. That 10 grand down puts me only being owed eight and I'm getting a thousand dollars a month on eight grand for 40 months. This is this is really the transition to becoming the bank. And, and that's yeah. man, listen. That's 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 game right there, man. You guys <laughs> so much game. That, that, that's amazing, man. I, I love to see your trajectory. That's you guys are inspiring, man. I'm, I'm so inspired after this conversation, you. man. Let me, let me ask you guys this question. Um, before we get out, let me ask you this question, though. Um, what would you say is a uh, your favorite book or something that's um inspired you along the way? If, if you guys have a favorite book, so believe it or not, I'm one of those people. I I, I openly admit. 
I read a lot, but I don't read books all the way through. So mm -hmm. I'm one of those. But you listen I, a lot. Yeah, too. yeah, I listen, but I go straight to the chapter that I need. And I know yeah. that could be scary sometimes. But again, remember, if I if I think about stuff too much, I don't do. So mm -hmm. I usually do that. But there's one book that I actually, well, several books, but two books that I've read all the way through. One is called Set for Life. Um, and the other one is called How to Become a Millionaire God's Way. That was the first book I ever read front to back several times. How to Become a Millionaire okay. God Way. Uh, that was important for me because, you know, again, you know, we're here and, you know, I didn't go deep into it, but, you know, people are here today, gone tomorrow. Like yeah. we've lost a lot of family members. And mm -hmm. to me, it's not just about the money. Like, OK, I want to make some money, but I want to I want to be well with my soul. Like I want to I want to feel good about just life, not just money. And the money is just a tool to help you get freedom. This is why we so much on freedom. This is why. You know, we talk about it so much because mm -hmm. what I realize is there's a lot of people chasing the bag and you're going to mess around and miss mm -hmm. out on life chasing the yes. bag. And when you're dead mm -hmm. and gone, somebody else going to be in that bag that you chased mm -hmm. and you never got a chance to enjoy it. Yeah. Like I, I seen that happen with family and friends. And and most recently, there's a, a, a investor of ours that we know, multi, multi, multi millionaire who literally came to me one day. and was like, man, I, I would I would love to trade lives with you. And I'm like, what? Bro, you got a Ferrari in your living room. What are you talking living about? Room. <laughs> <laughs> you walk around with a $750,000 watch on. Like, what? you know what I mean? What do you mean? And he's like, doesn't matter. He say, every time I see y'all, when y'all come, because those beach houses in Miami, he owns those beach houses mm -hmm. that we be renting mm -hmm. all of them. So he's like, every time y'all come to one of my houses, then it's you, your wife, your kids, your cousin. I come roll up on y'all. Everybody's like, nobody's pressured. Like, you're not... <laughs> You know, you're not, oh my God, we gotta make a million dollars of you going, you know. He's like, I he says it has gotten to the point where I can't even take a trip with my family. Cause even when I do, I can't turn it off. I it's be I, and I have more money than I need, but I don't know how to shut it off. Yeah. He's like, mm. I don't know how to shut off. I, I have more money. I, I become addicted to work. Yes, he has. You know, and I seen that happen with my dad. I didn't go in the story, but my dad passed away while he was working at the mm. groundbreaking ceremony. My dad, my dad like work, 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 work. Yeah. And the doctor just says heart stop. Like he's, only 57. he's only 57 years old and just boom, right. you know, on the day after Father's Day. So it was, it was, it was one of those things that if I can say one thing, if you notice, I learn from my mistakes. Yes. Yeah. Every time yeah. something has happened, it puts me in a different mindset because I saw what happened to my dad. I said to myself, oh, we're going to enjoy all of our forties. Mm -hmm. This is why we've been traveling every month for the last two and a half years. Three years mm -hmm. almost. We're going to enjoy this. We we're going to work hard, but we're going to enjoy this. We're going to do freedom and family. That's that's our flex. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you cool with the that. Lambos and it's cool with the private jets and it's cool. That, that's great. I mean, I've been in all of them, but my flex to the ground, family and freedom. That's what I want to show Ooh. people. You can have family and you can have freedom. That's my flex. And that's, that's a bigger why, flex. And my, that's that's, that's, that's the a flex. flex. A huge flex. Yeah, that's the flex. That's why you always see us like that. Yeah. You know, we Disney World on a Tuesday, you know, mm -hmm. this place there. Like, that's why Trapper, when he came with it, I never get I'll say this too. When Trapper came the first time, he 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 needed that was so powerful, he needed to come back. So two weeks mm -hmm. later, he was like, Bro, I need to come back. I want to come back. I need to connect with y'all some more. But I got my daughter. Mm -hmm. Bring her. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. He's like, I could bring my daughter. Yeah, man, bring her. He brought his daughter and he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna take my daughter to Disney World. I'll be back. I'm like, you not without us. We going to, so you know, <laughs> we literally we went there, and I was glad we was able to be there because there's a, a moment where the the parade came around and he broke down in tears. We had to catch him, like he had on his neck, and we had to catch him from falling. I was like, what's going on? He was crying, and he was like, man, it's just tears of joy. Like, bro, you know where I've been at. I yeah, Disney World was never a thought in my mind, and I'm yeah, here with my done. daughter on my shoulder. She she yelling Nikki and all this yeah, stuff. Man. It was it all just became overwhelming to him. And his we we do a joke about it all the time when we go in that we yeah, do what the video his daughter his daughter say daddy he was crying them tears of joy That's what she always <laughs> so, but see, so you know listen man that was everything what you just said and I don't even know, like family and freedom like yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about that's what all everything we talk about that's what it's all about man and that is the ultimate flex like it is. i don't even like the people I, 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 I know people do it for a reason when they you know the ferraris and the stacks of my yard but that doesn't impress me when i see you guys together like you are today 
that impresses me, man. As soon as I'm done here, I'm, I'm about to just like you know, um, go call my wife and give her a hug because the way no, I see y'all no, too, no, man. I feel like I got to now, and plus I want brother yeah. yes. to watch this. But um, yeah. but yeah, man, like you, you guys are ultimately <laughs> inspiring, man. I, and I just want to say this before we go. I just want to thank you for your time because I know it's valuable, man. And I love the fact that you're willing to share your story with our audience. Um, and you know, we're going to basically support you in anything you do because you come oh, from, you come from and, and now you guys are giving back. And we and we just appreciate you, man. Core, I know you got something you want to say, good brother. Yeah, man. Like you know, like I said, I once once they came on together, I was I already <laughs> knew what it was about to hit for. So I'm good with you know, like when when they they they, they flex in the right way. Like even when you flex, oh, you flex oh. the right way. So like it, it ain't it ain't really it ain't you know what I mean? Like it ain't really no ain't really nothing more to be said. Like y'all doing it the right way. Y'all y'all always reach back. Y'all always and then y'all pay it yeah, forward man. too because y'all helping the, the next generation. Y'all reaching back and paying it forward. Y'all like the you know, like y'all, y'all like the tree yeah. branch, y'all in the middle. You know what I mean? Like y'all fed the y'all fed y'all fed the previous generations and y'all gonna feed the next okay. few generations with what y'all doing. So I appreciate the time that y'all gave us today. And oh, the audience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I, I, man. I, I, Anybody, yeah, we gotta make up and and, and, and and I say this too. Like it's will. important. Yeah, it's it's important that we do these and I tell tell people because you know. A lot of times, I remember when we first did uh, Truck and Hustle, uh, yeah, Romel, yeah, and yeah. he was like, I reached out. I only had like a thousand followers, and I didn't think y'all was going to do it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, listen, I don't, honestly, I don't care that's about that. Like, problem, that's, that. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah. Like, followers is one thing, you know, right. money thing. We have to do this. Like, because we have to be able to, to, to come together as a community, especially our people, mm -hmm. and they need this. They need by the hood and hood estates doing things. They yeah. need the podcast. Yes, they need us. Helping each other, jumping on lives together. Like yeah. you know, I I, I did a a, a lives uh, with with Malik over at Real Estate Coach Carter. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, like tr trust me, listen, we're for the people, we're for the community. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, we have a lot of people, so we get a lot of people hitting us up. So it's not we're not able to do everybody, but mm -hmm. we, you know, it, it ain't. I just want people to know, listen, we're here for everybody, and we need to do this together. There's no we are here and y'all that nah we all we all the same. Yeah. It don't matter the bank yeah. account, it don't matter the followers, it don't matter none of that. We all we all the same because you know why? We we all can be back where we what were. And <laughs> at the end of the day, we can't Man. take none of this with us. You know ain't, what I'm saying? So ain't no you all buying no hearse. They say it all the time. Yep. Ain't none of this, this going true, with man. us. Yep. Ain't none going with it. But I'm gonna say this, this last thing, y'all. I want them to understand how we how we how we started. We started as our first company. And our first company was built off um just what is John 15. Mm, divine. 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 That was the name I called Divine Investment. That was our company. Yep. And we knew that right then and there that God was going to use us because he said that he was divine and we were the branches, the branches yeah. and that we were going to take root inside of him and that he was going to grow us where we need to be. And we've been riding this journey ever since. Yep. So we know that now all we have to do is go snatch back. With our branches, if we got yeah. enough branches to reach out to others yep. to put them right in that soil with us. Even, it's even, even, even the hood estates, hood estates is just the brand. That's all. The business that's behind hood estates is called investment branch. It's investment branch. Yeah, it's, it's all, all it all links in like oh, that. Right? It all makes sense. It all comes together. Listen, um, you you guys are amazing, man. I can't thank you enough. Um, like I thank said, I'm, I'm huge fans of what you do. I, I consider you guys legends because you know, um, as someone who's in, in real estate and business, like I always look for folks that look like me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I found you guys. I'm always looking. I'm always looking for folks that look like me. Um, that right. are, that are out here. And, and but it's not just that you're doing the business part. It's about the way that you guys give. I think that's mm -hmm. that's important. And I, you know, just want to wish you continued success. Um, mm -hmm. and to our Thank audience, you. like uh, our audience probably overlaps with this a lot. So you guys probably already know who the states is. But if not, please go check out everything they got going on. Please support them because they give back to the community. Um, which yes, is important sir. to us because we are a community organization first and foremost. Before we do anything else, um, our, our work is in the street. So, um, just want to well, yeah. thank you again. Can't thank you enough for your time. And, um, and you know, for our audience out there, like I said, check out everything they got going on. We appreciate all your support as always. As we always say, it's not about how much money you make; it's about how much you keep. Game elevates, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.